Okay, guys, so hello, so welcome back, guys. So now we're going to move on to a completely different section of the BIMA. Uh, still sticking with section two, however, we're going to move on to the math section. And arguably, some people find the math section quite difficult, especially because you don't have a calculator. But, guys, uh, going through this course, we'll make sure that um, everyone is happy and on the same path when it comes to answering the math questions. So, just a bit about the uh, math section of BMAT section two. The most uh, the things that come up really, really commonly are the following. So geometry and measure. So this is mainly talking about that sort of thing about bearings and Pythagoras and that sort of idea. Uh, algebra, obviously with any math test, you could expect a lot of algebra in there. Uh, number, again, is a really common one, especially this idea of standard form and simplifying fractions and stuff like that. But we'll go through that. Uh, probability, this is again a big one. Uh, students find this sometimes quite difficult, but there are a few key formulas. If you do understand them, you're in a um, good path. And yeah, that's basically it. So firstly, guys, we're going to uh, start by, this is one of the uh, more common ones. So number, remember, number was um, over here. And that's the one we're going to start off with at first, because I think in the specification, number is the first thing which comes up in the math section. So without further ado, guys, let's move on to that. So let's look at this question from BMAC 2019. And there's always uh, quite a few questions every year uh, from the math section on the BMAC. So question four, it says the non zero numbers uh, P and Q are such that P plus Q equals three bracket P minus Q. And this is what's the value of PQ over P squared plus Q squared. So guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that minute. We'll be going through the solution. Or guys, if you have uh, no idea whatsoever, just continue on and we can go through the solution there. Okay guys, so welcome back. Hopefully you had a chance to attempt that. So let's go through this. So me seeing this question, guys, the first obvious thing I could do is just expand and fit around with this equation over here, right? So then I'm going to get P plus Q equals 3P minus 3Q, right? And then what I could do, guys, is bring all the P's on one side and all the Q's on the other side. So I'm going to take that P there and that minus 3Q there. So I'm going to get 3Q plus Q equals 3P minus P, meaning 4Q equals, um, 4Q equals 2P. Therefore, P equals 2Q. So I have a formula of P in terms of Q now. Now, this is really good because what I can do is plug this. The next obvious thing to do is just plug this into the other equation, isn't it? So then I'm going to get um, 2Q, Q over um, 2Q all squared plus Q squared. Now, if I do that, guys, what I'm going to get is um, 2Q squared over 4Q squared plus Q squared. Right. And then if I simplify that, it's going to be 2q squared over 5q squared. Q squared cancel out. And therefore, I'm left with 2 over 5. So hopefully, you guys, you can appreciate that in this answer. The um, the answer will be uh, 5. And this is a really important skill, guys, in the math section. Most of the time, you won't know exactly what to do straight away. Right. But just do what's the most obvious thing to do. So the most obvious thing to do just to see in this question is expanding that equation, playing around with it. And then the next obvious thing to do is plug it into um, this equation. And from that, you do get somewhere. So hopefully, guys, that has made sense. And I really look forward to seeing you in the next question. All right, guys, so welcome back. So previously, we're looking at BMAT 2019 question four, this question where it wasn't really obvious what to do first. But hopefully, guys, you, when you do the most obvious thing first, first and you move forward from there, you do end up at a correct answer. But now, guys, we move on to the next question. Um, whoops, this is not... OK, guys, so previously we were looking at BMAT 2019 question for um, this question where it wasn't really obvious what to do first. But once you do the most obvious step and you follow that through, you should end up at the correct answer, which was B. But now, guys, we move on to the next. OK, guys, so previously we were looking at this question, BMAC 2019 question four, where looking at um, just this question of rule is really hard to see how you're going to go from those equation to a number or a fraction in this case. But hopefully, guys, just following through what's the most obvious thing to do and following that through, you should end up at a reasonable answer and you should get B, which was the correct answer to this question. 
But now, guys, we move on to the next question, BMAT 2019, question 8. So this question says, find the value of um, that nasty-looking uh, square root. So, guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that minute. We'll be going through the solution. Okay, guys, welcome back. So this question actually is surprisingly quite common, right? And what you have to do in these kind of questions, guys, is... So first, I'm going to write my square root, just put leave it as that for now, because I don't know how big my fraction is that I'm going to write out. And you look at the numerator of the equation, and now you see 10 to the power of what is common between both terms in the numerator. That's always going to be 10 to the power of 1. So I'm going to stick out 10 to the power of 1, or just 10. Meaning, inside the bracket now, if I put a bracket, so 10 times something gives 6 times 10 to the power of 2. That's going to be 6 times 10 to the power of 1, right? Which is just 60. So it's going to be 60. And then for the other one, plus, and that one's obviously going to be 4. And then over... And the um, denominator, so 10 to the power of what is common between both of them, in this case, it's going to be 10 to the power of minus 3, right? And then what's going to be here is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the power of 1, which is basically just 12, right? And the next one is just going to be 4, right? And you can probably see where this one is going then. So then what you do over here, guys, is, again, following up my square root, um, just simplifying that, it's going to be 10, 64, and then it's going to be 10 minus 3, 16. Right, and then you can simplify this even further. Yet, uh, what, how, the way you can simplify that um, further is that you could 10 divided by 10 to the minus 3. Remember, when you divide powers, you have to minus them, so it's be 1 minus minus 3, which is 4. So it's going to be 10 to the power of 4, right? And then 64 divided by 16 is just going to be 4, isn't it? Right, so that's that. And the way you do with this kind of set is uh, you just do 10 to the power of 4 times square root of 4 and that's going to be 10 squared times 2 and hopefully you guys can reach it that's going to be 200 which is going to map out onto e so hopefully you guys with that technique is uh, you, you can really see and once you get these nice numbers 64 16 uh, and uh, these 10 to the power it's quite evident that it's quite easy to square root and that really tells you you're on the right path because remember guys you're not allowed to calculate it in this section so you should expect some nice um, easy to fit around with numbers so hopefully guys that makes sense and i really look forward to seeing you in the next video all right guys so previously we we're looking at this question bmat 2019 question 8 to do with this nasty looking so but hopefully guys you've uh, we've established that it isn't really that nasty looking when you break it down into its parts and really guys this comes up uh, quite a lot so once you have this skill now it's going to be really easy for you going forward so now, guys, okay, guys, so previously we were looking at this question, VMAT 2019, question 8, where we had this nasty looking said. But hopefully, guys, uh, we've established that it isn't too nasty looking and breaking it uh, apart into its um, into simple steps. Uh, hopefully, guys, that has made it clear that this isn't that much of a bad question. And this comes up quite a lot. So hopefully you would have this mindset when you attempt other questions like this. But now, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next question. Okay, guys, so welcome back. So previously, we were looking at this question, BMAT 2019, question 8. This nasty looking third. Uh, hopefully, guys, you, uh, we've established that this third isn't actually that nasty looking. And um, when you break it down into its parts, we really appreciate that it's not really that bad of a question. And this comes up quite a lot, guys. So remember, when you see this question again, don't be frightened by how nasty it looks. Just break it down to it, into its parts using the method that I taught you, and you should all be fine. But now, guys, we move on to the next question, BMAT 2018, question 4. So this one says, which one of the following is a simplification of? And then you have that fraction. So guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute. This one should be more manageable, and um, be sure to be back after that minute when we'll be going through the solution. Okay, guys, so let's go through this. So 
First you want to do, um, this is just a matter of uh, simplifying that fraction, isn't it? So you look at the numbers, what common factor goes into both of the numbers? So the common factor that probably goes into both numbers is 8. So the top 48 goes into 8, is it 6 times, isn't it? And 48 goes into 45 times. And then m to the 5 divided by m to the uh, 2. So the m to the 2 would just cancel out. And this would go to m to the 3, right? And then p over p cubed. So this p would cancel out. And this p would just go p to the 2. Because remember, when you divide um, indices, they, you have to minus the powers, right? So it's going to be 6 over 5, um, m cubed. And, it's, and since it's uh, 1 over p squared, it's going to be p to the minus 2. So hopefully, guys, you can appreciate then that the answer in this case would be b. So hopefully, guys, this was uh, more of a straightforward one. And really, you should use these kind of questions, guys, to really save time on the much harder ones, which require more time, such as the nasty looking third. Sometimes they can require yeah, a bit more time. So hopefully, guys, that has made sense. And I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. OK, guys, so previously we were looking at this question, BMAT 2018 question four, which wasn't too difficult compared to the other questions we were doing just before this. So hopefully, guys, that was um, pretty much free marks. But if you have any problems, don't worry, guys, it's still early stages. And just if you have any concerns, just post your comments down below and we can always go through them. But now, guys. OK, guys, so previously we were looking at this question, BMAT 2018 question four, where we figured out the correct answer was B. Hopefully, guys, this was pretty straightforward and you probably didn't even require my help. But if you did require my help, hopefully that has made sense, guys. And now we move on to the next question. So BMAT 2017 question four says, which of the following is equivalent to uh, and then um, uh, that equation? So, guys, pause the video. Be sure to be back after a minute. We'll be going through the solution. OK, guys, so hopefully this one wasn't too bad. Um, so if you just write out that um, those brackets out in four, be root five minus two, root five minus two. Then if you expand them, so you do the first number times it, so root five times root five is just going to be five. And then the outside, so root five times minus two is going to be minus two root five. Then the inside, minus two times root five is going to be another minus two root five. And then the last one, so minus two times minus two is going to be plus four. And then simplify this, it's going to be nine minus four root five. Okay, so now that maps on to F. So this again, guys, hopefully that wasn't um, uh, too tricky. I do understand, guys, some of you probably don't do maths. So it might be, uh, you might be a bit slow in it. But don't worry, guys, as you go through and as you practice more and more, um, these themes would run out, uh, would run throughout and they should become pretty easy over time. But hopefully, guys, that was a pretty straightforward one. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. OK, guys, welcome back. So previously, we were looking at BMAT 2017 question four, where we uh, we had this question, root five minus root minus two all squared. Hopefully, guys, that was pretty straightforward. And hopefully most of you guys didn't have any problems there. But don't be shy, guys. If you had any, if you did have problems, just comment down below and we can go through those concerns. But now, guys, we move on to the next question, BMAT 2017. So this is the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of a planet is given by G, which equals big G, big M over R squared, where M and R are the mass and radius of the planet, respectively. And G is a gravitational constant. Is given that, yeah, small G is that, big G is that, big R is that. And it says, what's the value of M correct to one significant figure? So, guys, pause the video. Get, make sure you give this a, a shot. And be back after that minute. We'll be going through the solution. OK, guys, so you want us to find the value of m. So we need to rearrange for this uh, parameters in the m. So I'm going to take the r squared to the other side first. Can we, so g r squared equals big G, big M. Therefore, m is small g r squared over g, right? And then we, ha we know that small g in this case is 10 uh, times r squared, which is going to be 6 times 10 to the 6 all squared over big G, which is uh, 7 times 10 to the minus 11. And then if you expand this out, it will be six, 10 times 36 times 10 squared. Because remember, when you do, when you have this all squared, it's going to be 6 squared, which is going to be 36 times 10 to the power of 6 all squared. And then you have to times out the power. So 6 times 2 is 12. And then divide this by uh, 6 times 10 to the minus 11. Now, this can be joined with that by the simple law of indices where you, if you times two powers, you have to add them up. So it's going to be 10 to the 13 times 36 over 7 times 10 to the minus 11. And then 10 to the 13 over 10 to the minus 11. Remember, when you divide powers, you have to minus them. So it'll be 13 minus minus 11. So 13 plus 11 which is going to be 24. So it'll be 10 to the 24 times 36 over 7. Now, we don't have a calculator. But we can say, uh, we know um, uh, 7 goes into 35 five times. So we can just call this 5 
and a bit times 10 to the 24. Now, if you look at the answers, the only options that have 10 to the 24 um, is going to be these ones, right? And it's clearly not going to be two, isn't it? It's more likely going to be five. And also, this is um, correct to one significant figure. So this five and a bit was probably, let's just say, something like 5.3 or something like that. And then obviously, when you do one significant figure, that would round down to just five. So hopefully, guys, that question has made a load of sense and really look forward to seeing you in the next video. OK, guys, so previously we looked at this question, BMAT 2017, question 16, to do with um, this equation and working out what M was correct to one significant figure. Hopefully, guys, that was really good revision of how indices work and how you just generally deal with multiple terms and how you can simplify those. And also we revisit this, this idea of one significant figure. So. Now, guys, we move on to the next question, which is BMAT 2015, question 16. Again, there's a star on here, guys. So as with the value section, this is an indication that quite a few people um, got this wrong. So it says, a city football club collected money for charity at all of its matches for a year. At the end of the year, the total collected was divided amongst the three charities, A, B, and C, in the ratio 1, 2 thirds, 4 fifths. Charity C received 3,000. So uh, what was the total amount collected for charity during the year? So, guys... Pause the video, be sure to be back after a minute, we'll be going through the solution. Okay guys, so let's go through this. So we know here that Charity C received um, 3,000, so four out of five is equivalent to 3,000, right? So we can now, that is, we know four over five parts is equivalent to 3,000. So we can work out what one part is equivalent to by timesing 3,000 by five, and then dividing that by four, that's going to be 15,000 over 4. And then if you, um, you can write this as 7,500 divided by 2, dividing total bond by 2, and that's going to be um, 3,750 by a quick mental maths. All right, so then that means that charity A, since it's one part, is 3,750. Now we need to work out what 2 thirds is, right? So if we divide that a third, so if we divide one part by three, you will get what a third is worth. So that's going to be 3, 750 divided by three, uh, three. And I used to like to use this bus stop method for quick um, division. So 3, 750 divided by three, three goes into three once, three goes into seven twice, one left over, three goes into 15 now, five times, and three goes into zero, zero times. So that's going to be one, two, 50, right? Therefore, two thirds, is going to be 1250 times 2, which is going to be 2500. All right, so 2 thirds is 2500. Now, adding those all together, these two together are going to give me uh, 7, uh, no, 5500. And then if you merge it with that one, right, the 5000 and 3000 is going to give you 8000 plus the 750 and the 500 uh, are going to give you 1250. Adding those together, you'll get 9,250. And then this clearly maps on, guys, in, onto answer E. So quite a bit of um, um, numerical manipulation there, guys. Question itself isn't too easy. It's probably just a time pressure which can get to people. So this is why, guys, it's really important to practice mental maths. If your mental maths isn't up to scratch, what I highly suggest, guys, is perhaps doing a couple of GCSE uh, maths papers, non-calculator and calculator, as fast as possible. And obviously, the, non -cal the calculator ones, but try not to use a calculator. That would obviously gear up your mental maths, so especially if you don't do A-level maths, guys. I know it can be quite difficult um, um, for your mental maths because it has been untouched for some time but if you just practice guys that would be, make sure uh, you're in a uh, good seed for the exam come october november so guys uh, good luck with that and i hope to see you in the next question